Hello, fellow travelers. It's Phil Barfoot from Celebration Concert Tours here in Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. I cannot tell you how excited we are to be hosting worship in the Holy Land. So glad you're going to be part of this wonderful, life-changing trip. I guarantee your life will never be the same after this trip. You will never read the Bible the same. Every Bible story you've ever read will just jump off the page and come alive to you because you've actually been in the very places where these events took place. So I'm looking forward to a great spiritual time, a time of refreshing and renewing and recharging for all of us. It's going to be the trip of a lifetime in so many ways. And I got to tell you, over the past three or four months, there's been a group of people all across America praying for every one of you in alphabetical order, by last name, that God would just do something fresh and new in your life on this trip. And I know all of us, all of us are looking forward to that. And we have a small group going, so uh, you get a lot of personal attention, and we get to do actually more than another group would, would do just because we have uh, a smaller group to maneuver around, so it's going to be great. And my personal prayer for all of you is that God gives you at least three or four aha moments. You know what an aha moment is? If you do say aha, okay? <laughs> it's one of those moments that uh, you just remember for a lifetime. It's a memory, a mile marker that... Uh, it's something you just look back to the rest of your life, thanking God that he did something special in your life at a particular point of time, which I believe will be this trip. And obviously on a trip like this, we go to be a blessing. We go to share our faith and we go to be a blessing to those around us. We go to be a blessing on the to the other folks on the trip. But guaranteed, every time, you will be blessed. It's like a spiritual boomerang. We go to be a blessing we go to see lives changed, but every time our life is changed, and that's my prayer for every one of you, that as you walk where Jesus walked, that your life will be dramatically changed in so many ways. And if you know anything about our company, the concept is very simple. At Celebration Concert Tours, we do all the work and you have all the fun. Do I hear an amen? All right? Uh, our job is to absolutely uh, make sure you have the trip of a lifetime. Our job is to serve you any way we can. So there's no such thing as a, a small need. If you have any kind of need at all, make sure you let us know and we will be there to wait on you and to help you any way we can and to assist. Uh, no such thing as a dumb question. Every question you have is important. So uh, our staff is there to, to help you, to uh, serve you, and to make sure you have the absolute trip of a lifetime. All right, so... Uh, Yes, friends, 21 pages of everything you ever wanted to know about the worship in the Holy Land trip. Let's take a look at the orientation packet you have in your hands. I assume all of you are by yourselves or with another person going on the trip and uh, viewing this video together. Well, let's walk through it together, all right? Uh, let's take a look at page two of your packet uh, next to your family and your Bible and your church. This is next in importance, all right, over these next few weeks leading into the trip. All right, make sure you uh, get acquainted with everything that's in the packet, great information. We tried to cover all the bases and answer all your questions. However, if you have any questions after going through this video and the packet, uh, make sure you call our office and uh, we'll be glad to uh, answer any questions you may have. Let's take a brief look at the daily itinerary. All of us fly to the Holy Land, to Tel Aviv on Monday, September 17th. Uh, we all arrive between oh, 7.15, I believe, and 10.55, all right? All of us arrive, and uh, you go through customs and pick up your luggage and meet our staff outside the exit in the arrivals hall. Make sure you just keep going until you leave through the exit, and our staff will be there to greet you and look for the CCT logo sign. It'll have a sign that uh, has the Worship in the Holy Land um, logo on it. And uh, just look for that. We'll be there to greet you. You will be hugged, all right? Our staff are, are all huggers. You'll, you'll be hugged a lot and loved on a lot. And somewhere as close to noon as possible, we will transfer to the uh, St. Gabriel Hotel in Bethlehem, a five-star hotel. You're going to love it. We'll try to get you some free time that afternoon in Bethlehem. Make sure you don't sleep too much. A little cat nap on the bus is fine, but you don't want to sleep too much that day or your body will not know if it's night or day when you go to sleep that night, all right? So 
Uh, we'll try to keep you active and uh, give you something to do that afternoon, a little sightseeing. And then at 7 p.m. dinner at the St. Gabriel Hotel, wonderful hotel, wonderful food, wonderful staff. You're going to love it. All right. Next morning, bright and early, a breakfast is served from 7 to 8, and then we depart at 8.15. And uh, repeat after me, if I'm on time, I'm late. All right? That's kind of our concept. When we print a time, that means that that's the very latest we will leave. All right? If everybody's on the bus before 8.15, we'll leave before 8.15. All right? Um, but we will never leave past the printed time. All right? We'll assume you have other arrangements if uh, you're late past the t printed time, all right? We want to be respectful of everyone's time and squeeze as much great sightseeing in as we possibly can, all right? So uh, two places very few tours get to visit, Bethany and Lazarus too, all right? They're off the beaten path a bit, but to me, it's they're so significant, both to see Bethany, uh, where Jesus' ministry uh, was there and the great Lazarus tomb. We all love that story of Lazarus come forth and to go down in that tomb and realize the power with which Jesus spoke is a life changer. Then on to Mount Herod, we see the shepherd's field that day, give you an opportunity for shopping in Bethlehem and we'll only take you to reputable stores with quality product and um, actually there's Palestinian Christians that run this particular shop we'll take you to and just wonderful godly people and uh, all their proceeds go to to help their ministry and their their uh, family there in Bethlehem all right then we're going to visit the uh, church of the nativity see the very birthplace of Christ and uh, St. Catherine's church where you see the mass every uh, Christmas Eve and then dinner at the hotel and something again I think we're the only tour that does this we do a carols by candlelight service in an ancient shepherd's cave, even though it's the middle of September. Uh, it's just very, really meaningful to go down in one of those shepherd's caves where it probably all happened and uh, to be able to sing great carols and worship together by candlelight is awesome. And then overnight at the St. Gabriel Hotel again, on Thursday after breakfast, we depart and go a bunch of places. The Dome of the Rock, the Dome of the Rock, that's that dome you see in every single picture of the Holy Land, the Western Wailing Wall, the uh, Old City of Jerusalem, the Pools of Bethesda, Via Della Rosa, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and the 14 Stations of the Cross. We'll see all those things that day. Mount Zion, we'll explore the city of King David, which very few tours get to do, and then back to the hotel for dinner and overnight. All right, Friday, we'll check out of the hotel that morning, depart right at 9 a.m., go to the Israel Museum and the Holocaust Museum. Very solemn place to visit and yet very meaningful and uh, very powerful. All right, at 3.30, we'll have a wonderful worship and communion time at the Garden Tomb. We're privileged to have some wonderful ministers with us on this trip and ministers of music, and uh, they will be leading us in many of the worship times together and many of the devotion times that we have at the various uh, holy sites, all right? So I always love having worship and communion right at the Garden Tomb. It's a life changer. And then uh, we check in that night to the beautiful Oasis Hotel in Jericho, one of my favorite hotels, and uh, you're going to love it there. Great food, great accommodations, a five-star hotel. All right, Saturday the 22nd, uh, we depart the hotel and visit Masada. Masada has a view over the entire world. You could almost see Tuscaloosa from up there, you know. Uh, it's, it's a great view and great history, and then we take the cable car up there and come back, uh, visit Qumran that day, have lunch, you swim in the Dead Sea that day, and that's quite an experience in itself. We'll tell you more about that later, but ladies, you know all that, that mud you buy in the mall from the Dead Sea, you get to put it directly on, right out of the Dead Sea itself that day. So we have a good time swimming in the Dead Sea, and then a mini tour of Jericho and the Mount of Temptation, and uh, then dinner and overnight at the beautiful Oasis Hotel in Jericho. Sunday, uh, we will go to local churches, maybe divide up in, in groups or, or all go to the same church. We haven't decided yet on that. And some of you will do some ministry in those churches that morning. And then on to the Mount of Olives, that place where everyone gets their picture taken overlooking the city of Jerusalem, Garden of Gethsemane, Church of All Nations, and then dinner at one of my all-time favorite restaurants, the Grotto Restaurant in Bethlehem. All right. 
back to Oasis Hotel for for uh, overnight, and then the next morning after breakfast, we'll check out of the hotel, and uh, you'll have an opportunity of being baptized in the Jordan River. Again, a great, great experience. I know many of you, all of you, probably have been baptized, but being rebaptized and reconsecrated, rededicated in the uh, Jordan River is a great, great experience, and our ministers will be glad to help with that. All right, a meaningful worship time at the Mount of Beatitudes. We have our own area that we've rented for that particular time. We visit the ruins at Capernaum. We have uh, lunch at St. Peter's Fish Restaurant, where you see that whole fish staring at you. It's, it's quite an experience, all right? You don't have to have fish, but it's a great experience. You need at least a picture with one of those things, all right? And uh, then we go to the Church of Multiplication, Magdala, and then uh, late afternoon, we check into our hotel, the Golan Hotel in Tiberias, for dinner and overnight. Okay, a lot of things. Every day is full of um, really exciting, different events and different venues, all right? The next day, we actually do my favorite thing, and that's hop in a boat and worship along, right across the Sea of Galilee. We see the Jesus boat there. You go to Cana, and those of you who are married can renew your vows. Very meaningful experience. And then on to Nazareth, and Nazareth Village, and then back to the hotel for overnight. Then on Wednesday, uh, we check out of the hotel, go to Caesarea Philippi, again, a place that not many tours get to go. It's off the beaten path a bit. We visit Mount Carmel for a special worship and teaching time, and then enjoy the beautiful Haifa and the plain of Armageddon. We have lunch. We go to Caesarea Maritime, one of the most beautiful places on the planet, and uh, end the day there, hopefully around the sunset time, and then go into the ancient city of Jaffa for dinner, on to the airport, and uh, look at page 18 for flight information on that, and then we'll check into the airport for our return flights home. Now, the only time we've ever had any problems with people getting lost is when they walk off by themselves. Everybody say, boo. All right, we don't want you walking off by yourself. You are your brother's keeper. Make sure you are always with one other person from the group because if you do get lost, generally one of you has the sense and the bearings to figure out where you are and to get back. So we don't want you wandering off by yourself. All right, important items on page five. Uh, one checked bag only. You can do one checked bag and one uh, carry-on piece um, and then a personal item, all right? So to carry on the plane, you can have your carry-on luggage and one personal item and then uh, one checked bag to put uh, underneath the plane and check it, of course. And uh, that goes underneath the bus as well. Uh, be alert. Uh, keep a close watch on your belongings. There are pickpockets, sadly to say, in the Holy Land. Drink plenty of water. A mistake a lot of people make on trips is they don't drink enough water. Drink a lot of water. You'll be given a name badge with a lanyard and keep that on at all times. You can put your passport in it. You can um, put some of your belongings in there, some of your money in there. It's very hard to steal because it's right on your person, all right? And in your folder, you do have two name badges, or I'm sorry, luggage tags. Luggage tags, two luggage tags. Make sure you would take a... A pen and write in all that information it asks for and put that on your carry-on luggage and your checked bag as well. Keep your passport in a safe place, namely the name badge. Uh, incidentals, if you ordered any incidentals for your room, make sure you pay those the night before you check out of the hotel, all right? We cover everything except any extra things you want to order. So make sure you give them your credit card at the front desk and pay for those the night before you check out. Page six, travel day notes, all right? Make sure you arrive at the airport at least two and a half to three hours before your flight, all right? Murphy's Law creeps in. If you're running late, that's when the lines are long, all right? So get there, relax, enjoy each other, and get excited about the trip. Be praying about the trip, and then you'll... Uh, you'll be fine, but don't be running late that day, all right? Make sure you get there in plenty of time. I would definitely check in with your airline the day before the trip and the night before the trip to make sure there are no changes to your schedule, all right? Airlines love to change things, sometimes just by a little bit and sometimes by, by a half hour or so. So make sure you check online or by calling to make sure everything is correct 
on your trip. In fact, very easy to Google. If you just say uh, your airline flight number and say flight status. So for example, American flight 492 flight status, it will immediately come up the flight status and what gate you go to and all the information you need about that. You can just Google that, all right? Very easy. Again, luggage, one check piece and um, one carry on. Make sure your luggage is not any more than 50 pounds or you're gonna have to get down on your knees and pull out your heavy underwear, all right, in front of everybody. So you don't wanna do that. Uh, most of you know about the liquids. Um, if you do have liquids on your carry on, three ounces or less, and it must fit in one quart size clear plastic zip top bag. Make sure you know that and it's separate from the rest of your carry on as you go through security, all right? So you need to remove that and put it separately on the belt going through security. All right, page uh, seven, number three there, important notes for airline travel. Make sure you get a good night's rest the night before. Uh, next to my family, my travel pillow and my noise canceling headphones are my best friends, all right? Those are really helpful. But having a travel pillow and having uh, either noise canceling headphones or earplugs really, really helps because there's a lot of noise on those planes that you don't realize. Tips for packing, the big key word here is simplify. Just circle the word simplify. And plan, if you pack at the last minute, I guarantee you're gonna take way too much stuff. But plan accordingly to the days and look at the schedule and plan what you'll wear each day. Bring one or two comfortable pairs of shoes. This is not a fashion um, a fashion statement, but really whatever makes you feel comfortable. We will not make fun of your ugly shoes if they're comfortable, all right? Uh, in your carry-on bag, make sure all of these things are, lit, are there. Identification, this packet, uh, at least one uh, entire set of clothing in case somehow your luggage goes somewhere else. Uh, the most important thing here in bold, inform your credit and debit card companies ahead of time that you're planning on traveling. Tell them when you're traveling and where to. Give them the dates and they'll thank you and you'll also be able to use your credit card. If you don't do that, I guarantee the first time you go to use your credit card, they won't allow you to because they assume it is stolen. All right, so make sure you do that. Leave a copy of the front and back of your credit cards uh, with someone that you trust at home and just read what it says here, very important information. Getting through airport security, uh, read everything it says here and just be prepared to remove all your clothes, all right? If you do, then uh, you'll be totally prepared, all right? Because sometimes they make you take off um, obviously your belts and your coats and your jacket and your shoes and now they even have you take your iPads out and for sure your computers. Um, so read everything there and uh, don't be surprised when you go through security if they ask you to do all those things, all right? Uh, your ID with you at all times along with your passport. Keep your passport with you. Medications, most people put in their checked bag, but if it's something you need, uh, the pill and the bottle must match, okay? If they pull that out and they see separate pills, they're going to want to know what they are and uh, it's best to have the pill and bottle match. Little uh, section here on leg swelling, and uh, next page, um, shorts, sleeveless shirts. Um, shorts, sleeveless shirts, or tank tops are normally not accepted at the holy sites. So, um, if you do wear a sleeveless shirt or tank top, you'll be required to put a jacket or wrap on of some kind. At the wailing wall, come prepared with a wrap or jacket if your shirt does not cover all the way down to your neck. Um, Ladies, things like V-neck shirts are generally not considered to be modest enough. Pants, jeans, capris are acceptable at these sites for women, all right? Um, so pay attention to that. Watch where we're going each day and make sure you dress appropriately. Shopping will have ample time at reputable stores. We don't want you to go to places where they're going to rip you off, so we'll keep, stay away from those places. But don't shop along the way. Make sure you stay with the group and then we'll all have designated times for shopping. The food in Israel is amazing. Typical foods, uh, you're gonna love all the different foods they have. A lot of vegetables and a lot of um, salads, a lot of grilled meats, and it's really healthy food. Uh, some hotels in the Middle East do not provide washcloths, so you might wanna bring a few along. Israel is eight hours ahead of Central Standard Time. So if you're in Central Standard Time, it's eight hours ahead. And uh, 
accordingly, if you're on Eastern time, it's only seven hours ahead. Or if you're on Pacific time, it's six or six hours ahead. Okay, so make sure you uh, you plan accordingly to the time and where you are located from, uh, especially when you go to call home or have somebody call you, make sure they know and you know what time it is in the place you're calling. And make sure you bring these adapters, electronic adapters. Uh, you can get those at any store, um, Walmart works and uh, any store like that. Make sure you get the appropriate adapters for the Holy Land. And um, let's take a look now at page number nine, your daily spending estimate. This is just pretty much down the middle, all right? Uh, this is eating at normal places. If you eat at Ruth's Chris every night, it'll be different. If you eat at McDonald's, it'll be less. But these are the meals you are responsible for every day. For example, Tuesday the 18th, you're responsible for breakfast and lunch. Um, on the 19th, just lunch. So um, watch according to what you're responsible for each day, and we try to give you a good standard of what it will cost that day. It's customary to tip the drivers and guides. A normal tip would be 70 to 80 US dollars per participant for the entire trip. That covers the driver and your guide. Our guide, Rami, is the best guide in the Holy Land. Trust me, he is the very best. So we want to bless him in a big way. We'll provide envelopes for you, and then you just put your tip in there. We present that to them on one of the last days. All right, the currency information on page 10. Um, you really don't need to get many shekels, all right? Um, if you just get a moderate amount, um, even even $100, and trade in $100 for shekels, you should be fine because most places take American money and most places uh, do take credit cards. So you really don't need much, but many times you have to pay to use the restroom. So make sure you do have some change on you, all right? Page 11, um, my wife and I are hosting the trip, my wonderful wife, Sherry, and... Uh, that's our contact info. Contact us for anything you need. And down on the cell phone uh, section here in Wi-Fi, uh, we try to get Wi-Fi in most of the uh, hotels we stay in. Normally, it is free. Um, now, AT&T and most of the companies now have a plan. It's only $10 a day to use, use your phone just like you do at home to text and make phone calls. Make sure you get that plan. $10 a day is really cheap. It used to be $70, $80, $90 sometimes per day to use your phone the way you do at home. So just like you do at home, you can use it, but make sure you call uh, and get that lined up before the trip. All right, page 12, emergency procedure. We have great insurance on you. This is accident and travel insurance. We rarely need to use it, but when we do need to use it, we found out it is very good insurance. Your hotel info where we're staying on page 12. And uh, briefly, page 15, okay? Flight arrival information, look for your name and just see the instructions next to your name, all right? Um, very much self-explanatory. On the top of page 16, upon exiting customs and getting your luggage, uh, you'll be greeted by our staff, given your name badge. You can hang and relax and get something to eat. And then we'll show you exactly where our meeting place is for 1130. And then our plan is to leave by noon that day when we arrive, okay? So find out where your name is. Make sure we have all the correct information on you. If we don't, let us know right away. And on page 18 are, is all the departure information. Now leaving, we generally, um, most of us fly out either late at night or early the next morning. So take a look at that. And uh, you'll see your name and where you're flying out of. Uh, some of you uh, that are flying out the next day at 11.45 or 12.15, uh, we'd suggest you get a hotel near the airport and uh, spend the, the night in a hotel in a nice bed instead of at the airport. For example, we're flying out early in the morning. We're just staying at the airport. But those of you flying out later morning or especially the next night should really get a hotel at uh, the airport there. And we can help you with that however you need. All right, hotel rooming list. Make sure you have the right roommate and make sure you like your roommate, especially if you're married to them. So any questions on that, let us know. But to be prepared, be praying that God will prepare us and prepare every person we'll be in contact with to uh, 
see some lives changed and just to be renewed and refreshed in our spirit, recharged as we go to the very place where Jesus walked. Your life, I guarantee, will never be the same. So glad you're coming. If we can help you in any way between now and then, please allow us to. But uh, you should have received your packet in the mail. They're going out today. Uh, This is Monday and you should get them later in the week and then you can view this video and look at the packet at the same time. It'll make a lot more sense to you. So God bless you. We will see you in the Holy Land and uh, so glad you're coming. God bless.